I, I, I feel like I, I diagnosed myself as, a, as an alcoholic. So I started drinking when I was 16 years old. Oh, nah, no creatine, no nothing. I just got it. I just, you know, I'm going to look right here in the camera and do this one. Uh, it's about perseverance. It's about continuing to fight. It's about not stopping, not quitting. It's about the discipline that precedes the excellence. It's about being disciplined. It's about wanting it. Omar Craddock, a.k.a. Omar Goodness, Mr. Colleen, Texas, U.S. Triple Jumper. I'm on my, on my way to Rio, man. I'm, I'm on that journey. Journey 16, Dream Big and B.I.G. Room to Improve. But most of my gym workouts consist of really just squats, uh, cleans, and some snatches. But with that, what I do, I implement some jumps with it. So if I'm going to do some cleans, now I'm about to do some box jumps. You know what I'm saying? Until I can actually work what that muscle works. So I'm saying so I can be explosive. So whenever I explode up, it's gonna be quick. Everything's gonna be quick. Just like how it is with the uh, with the cleans. If I'm squatting, it may be some like lunges or something, you know what I'm saying? Some some broad jumps or something going out for distance. So I, I love five metrics, man. I love bounding. I come out, I bound every day. I, my whole thing is uh like how they train over in Europe. They do a lot of bounding. The the Cubans, they do a lot of bounding. And I feel like that's something that the Americans are missing. And that's something that I like to uh, incorporate in my training. Metrics is it's probably my favorite thing to do. Uh, I love I love just I love jumping. I love using every muscle in my body. I have the power. I don't want to I don't want to put too much power on, on what I already have. I'm still trying to lean out. So everything that's going on is, is straight speed, man. I'm gonna be working on maybe 150s, 200s, and just going on working on turnover. Make sure I can turn over at the end. So when I'm coming down this runway for them last. 10, 15 meters, I got that same turnover speed. He was a good student though. But as far as him being an ISS and all that kind of stuff, he wasn't really like that. But when he started uh, track, first he didn't want to do it. But once they signed up for stuff, uh, they had to continue the task that they were doing, that they started doing. And what else? I mean, that's how I went. <clears throat> Damn, it was pretty much, we, we uh, we was taught not to quit. We didn't, we didn't really quit on anything. So, for me, like getting into track and field was like because of my brother. My brother did it right. when he was in seventh or eighth grade. Okay. Um, he want to follow his big brother's foot, footsteps. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And so, for me, it started in eighth grade, and I was good. I mean, yeah. I, I was I was destroying the talent. You feel me? But um, it was track. I wanted to play football, but. It just started taking off. The track took over more than the football game. But other than that, he's an alright guy. He's good. But yeah, he did get some weapons too, so don't let it fool you. <laughs> Actually, we, we st I stopped getting weapons when I was like 12. So, Not well. No, it was less than that. Younger than that, but it yeah, was, yeah, uh, yeah. was push-ups. Push-ups, sit-ups. That's why he loves doing that stuff. He can do thousands of crunches and all that. That was a punishment. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you want to punch your kids, don't whip them. Let them do push-ups and sit-ups is better than a whipping. Yeah. But college, oh yeah. my gosh, I was overwhelmed. You know, that's a mother's dream for their kids to go to school and graduate and overall just be just being a good person. This this how I'ma put it right here. I'ma look I'ma look right here in the camera and do this one. Uh it's it's not about being D1. It's not about being the best right then. It's about perseverance. It's about continuing to fight. It's about not stopping, not quitting. It's about the discipline that precedes the excellence. It's about being disciplined. It's about wanting. That's what it's about. So whether you're a 40-foot jumper in high school, a 47-foot jumper, and you go D2 or low D1, you never know where you can go. David, I believe David Oliver went D2. Maybe D3, I don't know, or NAIA. Jeff Henderson, long jumper, NAIA number one long jumper in the world last year. It's, it's all about what's in here and the work ethic you put in. It's never about the D1, it's never about that kind of stuff. I think my biggest reason for me 
improving from high school to college and, and beyond is I was a student of the sport. If you ask anybody else, like, I mean, Christian, Will, these, these are like my brothers to me, man. And you ask them, they students of the sport too. So I just learned about myself. I learned who I was. So that's always advice that I give high schoolers. I give anybody that asks me for advice is you got to know yourself. So if I know I'm not fast, I got to go work on some speed work. If I know I can't bound, you know, you got to go bound. So it's, it's all about knowing yourself. And, and that's just something that I think I did that, that really helped me continue to improve. This past year, phenomenal season for me, best year I've ever had. If you, if you looked at the beginning of my year, or at the beginning of the season, I felt like I should have jumped 17 meters when I opened up at Florida Relays. Jumped 1670, after that, everything went down. From 1670 to 1650 to 1640, 1630, I could not, I mean, get above that. So again, like I said before, it's about knowing yourself. So I had to get back to the drawing board and I started finding out, okay, everybody's saying in videos, everybody says, the second phase is not there. It's too quick, so that's what I did. I found out about me, about what helps me. And once I did that, boom, the next time I competed, 1753. So it's all about dissecting what, what your issue may be. You gotta know yourself. While I was at UF, my coach would always, uh, before he even put his input, he'll ask me, you know, how'd, how'd that feel? What'd you feel like you did wrong, boom, boom, boom. And, I'll be able to tell him, like, I felt like I was too slow. He'll tell you, yeah, exactly, you were slow. You didn't push out the back, and I could feel that. So that's, they, these are like the kind of stuff that I want younger kids to know, or even you know, people that are just you know, still trying to get on the professional ranks. You have to know yourself. I mean, a lot of people don't know, but I got arrested back in April of 2015, the first week of April. Uh, I got arrested for you know, a, a, a battery charge. And um, Everybody started, you know what I'm saying, they started like pretty much dragging my name like I was really some kind of barbaric person as opposed to, you know, looking at the things that I, that I do on the track and off the track. So, granted, growing up I may have had this attitude or whatever, but I always was a people person. I always wanted to, you know, work and help the people. So, they never looked at when I went to Tent City, you know what I mean, where it's just a, a bunch of homeless people living in tents, when I would go feed them on the holidays before I feed my own family. They didn't want to take that into account. They didn't want to take into account where I would go to actual kids' houses and speak to kids in their own house. You know what I mean? They want to take account. So when I come out here and I, I work with these kids out here sometimes, and, you know what I'm saying, talk to them, encourage them. So they, they didn't want to look at that. So I was getting beat down a lot for that. And then that's when, even at the school, I couldn't, I wasn't supposed to be using the, the weight room and the track. And then that's the reason I had to go and find out myself again and dissect what, what the issue was. And again, that's what I feel like led me to jump in 1753. So, I think that's probably like the hardest thing I had to overcome aside from having rap rapped on in high school, but I overcame that. But this is something that was pretty much going to end, end my career, like right before I even started, right before the deal, right before anything. So I, I'm actually share that with you, man. I um <clears throat> honestly, you know, this is gonna come, this is gonna come from right here, man. I uh I I, I feel like I, I diagnosed myself as a, as an alcoholic. So I started drinking when I was 16 years old, and uh, even once I got to college. I used to drink before and after practice. And granted, I was still jumping far, but who's to know? I mean, yeah, who knows what, you know, what I could have done had I not been drinking you know, before practice, after practice, and every day pretty much. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's tearing up my liver. I already had a bad, bad enough liver. When I was in high school, I was doing the same thing, drinking and you know, popping pills and stuff. And uh, I ended up in the hospital with a disease called rhabdomyolysis. And that's, you know, the liver, my muscles was failing, my liver wasn't functioning correctly. I had to, I was in the hospital, I think, for like a week or so. And I, that was it, man. Like, when I came in, the doctor was, at least the doctor told me I had three hours of life in me. I don't know how they could determine that, but I was in excruciating pain. I was, when I would use the bathroom, it was coming out looking like Coca-Cola. So that's, that's something where, like, it, it took a while. It took a while. I think when I was like 20, man, it's probably this past year, really. 20, 24, last year, I just turned 25, but that's when I was kind of like, yo, I gotta slow down on this, because it's, it's hurting me. That, that drink can really hurt. That's, that's something I, 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 I advise high schoolers, especially high schoolers and, and people that are coming up, man, you gotta stay away from that drink, gotta stay away from the drugs. That's, and that's why my shirts are B.I.G., Believe in God, it's, it's all about really believing, really putting all your heart into it. I mean, it's plenty of time, like, like, like now, this is my perfect example with me getting arrested and things, and it was actually a felony case. 
we got that dropped down to a misdemeanor, I'm still able to compete. I'm still able to go across into other countries and do, you know, what I love. That's that miracle. That's me keeping the faith, not stopping because it took a whole year for things to come full circle, but it's, it's still believing like, you know, God gonna bring me through this. So it's all about you having the faith.